an error in the pathway because there is no entry corresponding to this situation. Okay? And we had a choice between <coughs> reduce and shift, and we found this path does not allow us to progress, but if we take this path, then we were able to progress. Okay. Now, obviously, that, which means that when I got this conflict, shift reduce conflict, if suppose my pass table did not have this reduce action, then I would have been fine. Okay, I could have proceeded. That means this entry somehow okay, is an erroneous entry. And this should be removed. Okay, and then we said, why we are saying this is erroneous entry? Because we are saying that there is no sentential form in this language which can start with R. Right? So we are saying that if I now look at the sentential form of this grammar, then we will find that it is giving me a sentential form which is R dot equal ID and such a sentential form cannot occur. Okay? So what is wrong? Okay? How did I come to a situation where my pass table had this entry? Ideally, it should not have had. Okay? So where is the problem? Okay? If we understand the problem, then we will find that subsequent discussion will become very easy for everyone. Any ideas? Your problem could be anything. Just say something. Think aloud. So let me give you a hint. Okay, and the hint is that we were saying there is something called a state symbol. So top of stack always contains a state symbol. Okay. And what is the state symbol? What does what is the information captured by the state symbol? In a bottom of parser. <coughs> this we discussed right in the beginning. Then we started doing bottom of parser. What is the information which is captured by the state symbol? So state symbol is trying to capture the configuration of the stack. Okay. State <coughs> symbol, if it captures the configuration of the stack, then I'm fine. Okay, because in this case, state symbol should have been such, it should have remembered that there is no sentential form that can come with starting with R and therefore this reduction is wrong. So wherever, whatever my earlier state was, it should not have come to this state. Okay? Now let me try to explain that in terms of the grammar. Okay? Suppose my configuration is like this. I have this alpha, I have beta and I have some symbol and I have a production which says a goes to beta and then I have a symbol here that say uh, A, okay. some terminal say. Okay. And now when do I do this reduction? I am saying that there is a production, beta is a handle. So when will I do the reduction of beta to A? When? When this symbol, look ahead symbol, is in follow of A. That was the rule we gave for construction of the pass table. Now suppose I do this reduction and this becomes my configuration of the stack. Okay. And I say now this A is in follow of A and therefore I could continue passing. Okay. And the problem now is that by looking, if I look at the state now at the top, okay, this does not remember that below A is something which is alpha. Like in this case, this state did not remember that below R is a symbol which is the beginning of the straight. Okay. So if, now look at a situation that A is in follow of A, but then what happens? That I have a situation now where I say this symbol is in follow of A, but this symbol is not in follow of alpha A. Alpha is my configuration after this reduction. Okay? Then I have a problem. Okay? And exactly this is what is happening here. That although this R is in, uh, this equal sign is in follow of R, but is not in follow of when R is at the beginning of a string. Okay? That is where I got stuck, okay? which was giving me a wrong sentential form. So therefore, if I can now remember the whole context, that means the state symbol I have is not powerful enough. State symbol cannot remember the whole stack configuration. 
if I can make my state symbol more powerful, that it can remember the left context, then I would not have got into this problem. So now I am saying that I don't want to do this reduction only when I look at a symbol which is in follow of A, but I want to do this reduction only when the symbol is in follow of L5. Then I will be fine. Does it make sense? Okay. So this is how we make SLR passing technique more powerful. Okay. Now to make it more powerful, I need to change certain definitions. So I had certain transformations in the grammar. I first started with the grammar, then I augmented it. Then I gave you a definition of closure, and then I gave you a definition of go to, and then I said, using this information, create all sets of LR0 items, and then create a pass state. Okay. So first thing I want to do now is, I want to change or introduce a new definition and rather than saying I have this set of LR0 items, let me say I have now set of LR1 items. Okay. So I am introducing now more information so that I can remember this whole of the left context. Okay. And what is an LR1 item? LR1 item is nothing but an LR0 item. With a look ahead symbol. <coughs> so, earlier, what was my LR0 item? LR0 item was a symbol uh, or a production where I put dot anywhere on the right hand side of the production. Okay? But here I am saying let me also associate with this a symbol. Okay? And this symbol is eventually is going to be used for reduction. So now I'm going to carry extra state, extra information in every state. Okay. So typically, what can happen is that if I have an LR zero item like this, okay, I'm saying that let me have some look ahead symbol. Okay. And what is the significance of this symbol? This symbol is basically saying that at some point of time, when I keep on doing go tos on this, when I say that from this item I will go to an item on go to of y which is going to give me an LR0 item of a going to x, y dot z and then I further do a go to on z which gives me a going to x, y, z dot okay. and when I am ready for reduction, I will be able to reduce only on these symbols. I will remember the whole of left context. Okay. Now one thing that must immediately come to your mind is that if I am talking of this look ahead symbol, earlier I was doing a reduction on symbol which is follow of a. So this symbol must still be in follow of it, okay? but now it's a subset. So the way we are looking at it is that this symbol is in follow of R, okay? but now I want this symbol to be in follow of R, beginning R. Okay? Or when I say that this symbol should be in follow of A, I want this symbol also to be in follow of L5. So this set is always going to be subset of what is follow of A. Right? It cannot be anything else cannot be a superset. Okay? So this eventually will give me now extra information. So this is the first thing I introduce. Second thing I introduce is that when I look at my definition of closure set, earlier my closure set, so just to put you back on the track so that at least you remember, how did I compute my closure sets? I said that if I have an LR0 item which is of this form, it says a goes to alpha dot b beta, and I have a production which is of this form. Okay, b going to I have a production which says b going to gamma. Then how did I compute closure? I said all these items are going to be in the closure, and b going to dot gamma also is going to be in the closure. That is what was my definition of closure. Now I'm changing this definition. Now I'm saying that. Since I do not have these items anymore, I have LR1 items and not LR0 items, and I have to define now closure on set of LR1 items. Okay, so LR1 item will be something like this. Okay. So now I say that if I have an LR1 item of the form which says A goes to alpha dot B beta and B going to gamma is a production, then what will be the new item I will add in this? Okay. I will say that I am going to add now b going to dot gamma and what will be the look ahead symbol? 
burst off. You're partially correct, not fully correct, because what may happen is beta is null. Right? So it will now be first of beta A. So this is now giving me extra information, saying that when I do this, okay, I can do this reduction only when I have a symbol which is in first of beta. Okay, first of beta is going to be a subset of follow of B. This is the only extra thing I am going to do. And this now captures the complete stack configuration. So my new state is so powerful that rather than just saying that I will do a reduction on this symbol, this is saying I will do a reduction only if the symbol is in follow of whole of the stack. Make sense? Can there be only one symbol? Can there be? Only one symbol of the Could be. Okay. There could be more. First of beta I may contain multiple symbols. But this such this going to be is going to be a subset of B. Subset of follow of B. So first is conceptually is it clear what is happening? So do you understand why SLR parser has a limitation and how we are putting more information in this parser by enriching the information in LR0 item and calling it LR1 and putting some look ahead information and then saying now I can go to this new parsing method where my state is so powerful that not only it remembers what is below it but it remembers what is on the stack. So my earlier state was just able to remember what is below it. Okay, but this new state will be able to remember what is on the whole of stack because now it will know that not only I know that this symbol has to be in follow of R okay, or in follow of whatever was the reduction follow of L and that is when this reduction happened but it should also be in follow of when R occurs at the beginning and if this configuration is not acceptable configuration then earlier reduction would not have taken place. Yes, everyone is comfortable with this? Is this conceptually clear? What is going on? Okay. So let's take again an example and try to construct now a new parser for this. Okay. And this new parser I'm going to call is canonical LR parser. And in fact, this is the most powerful LR parsing method is available to us today. Okay. So in context free grammars, LR is a subset, but what we are going to discuss canonical LR parser. And let me also say with a look ahead of one. So if I just want to do a look ahead of one, this is the most powerful parsing method. If a language cannot be passed by this, then we are going to say method is powerful enough, it's the language which is not in this case. Okay. In earlier case, we said language was unambiguous, method was not powerful enough, and we went for a new method. Okay. In this case, we'll have to say now we know that method knows everything, method is the most powerful one language is in a different class and therefore we are not able to pass it. Okay, so let's try to construct now. Uh, so let's try to construct now canonical LR parser. Okay, and for which I'm going to, okay, so let's keep these definitions for the time being. Okay, let's clean this part of the board and let me pick up an example. Okay. So let's say I have this grammar and I'll explain why we are taking this grammar. Okay, this grammar has something very interesting. Okay, let's take this grammar. Okay. Now this grammar says, what are the languages which are generated by, or what are the strings which are generated by this grammar? What strings can be generated from this? So look at the first rule, uh, look at the second rule. It says A goes to A, and that's a right recursive rule, or A goes to B. So what is the string I can generate from that? A star B, right? And if I say S goes to AA, then I can generate A star B, A star B. Okay. Now, reason I am saying A star B, A star B is, and I want to take these kind of languages, that in earlier method of parsing, you would have found that the follow set of this and follow set of this are different. Now, in earlier method, what is the follow set of this? A? Dollar. And what is the follow set of this? either A or B, right? So in earlier method, okay, you would have noticed that this reduction would have been taking place on dollar also. So if I had written a string like A star B, it would have done this reduction and would have said 
I cannot proceed any further. Okay. So the reason I am repeating this symbol is that the follow set, although the symbol is same, but because of the context in which it is occurring, in this case follow set of this A is dollar. So this whole reduction can happen only in this dollar. Okay. And this first part of the A can be reduced from whatever is the input only on A and B and not on dollar. Okay. So that is going to separate out my things. Okay. So let's start constructing now parser for this. And again, we have to go through the same thing. We have to construct all sets of LR1 items now. Okay? Not LR0, but LR1 items, and then make a pass table. Now I not have to compute my follow sets because this information, look ahead information, will be carried as part of the LR1 items. Okay? So computation of the follow set is gone. Okay? So what happens now is that if I say I want to now construct closure of this. Okay. This now, my look ahead symbol is going to be, what will be the look ahead symbol for this? For this, it will always be dollar. Okay. So I can do this reduction only in dollars. Okay. And let me call this as I0. <coughs> right. And now, when I say that I want to take a closure, right? this is my initial item. So closure is going to give me S going to a a, right? There is only one production of A. And what will be the look ahead symbol here? Look at this. That's why I am keeping this definition here. Okay. So if you just try to do a pattern match here, okay, I am coming from this item to this item. Okay. This is where I am taking closure. So look at this that if I say I have a non-terminal symbol immediately on the right of dot, then I am looking at first of beta i. Now what is beta in this case? What is beta in this case? <coughs> beta is not s. B is s. What is beta? No, beta is null. So I am looking at first of epsilon dollar. That gives me dollar. So my look ahead will be this. Okay. Now I have to take closure of this A, right? So now I say A goes to A A or A goes to dot B, right? Now what will be the look ahead here? So first let's write that string. What will be the look ahead here? How will I compute look ahead for this? First of? First of A dollar. Now what is first of A dollar? A or B. Right? So these are my look ahead symbols. Okay. What about this? What will be look ahead symbol here? Same as what? Same as the earlier one. Because this closure is again coming from this LR1 item. Right? So again I will have A. Okay. Now you can see something interesting. Okay, just by looking at this first set of items. Okay, that eventually somewhere I will do a transition from this state where I say go to a state where I will have a look ahead as B. Okay? And that state is going to contain A going to B dot. And now you can see that when I do a reduction, I do only on these symbols and not on dollar. Because now I will say, I do not want to do a reduction on follow of A, but I want to do a reduction only when my look ahead symbol is this. So I will be able to reduce this B to A only on these look aheads and I will be able to reduce this, do this reduction only on AB and not on dollar. In some other state, you will find that when I look at the second A and that set of states which is carried, there I will be able to do reduction from dollars. Okay. So is computation of first item clear? Uh, so this is my initial state always and from this now I am computing extra information. Okay. So next state I say is go to of I0S and let me call that as I1. Okay. So first tell me what will it be? So it will obviously 
do a transition on S, so it will give me S dot, but what will be the look at it in the Why? First off, have I changed the definition of my go to? Have I given you a new, de new definition of go to? So, why are you saying computation of first or anything? That was only for closure. My go to remains as it is. That means this symbol has to be just carried. I do a shift here, and whatever is the look ahead, just carry that. Don't do any computations. Remember that I only gave you a new definition of closure. I did not give you a definition of go to. Okay? So my go to will still contain the same set of subset of LR0 item, and whatever is the look ahead that gets copied. Period. No computation of epsilon, first, or anything. Right? Okay? Then next thing I do is so I cannot do anything more on this. Now I say that I'll go to a state which will be corresponding to go to of I0 on A. Okay, and let me call this state as I2, okay, which is coming from here. So this gives me S going to A dot A. Right? I just shifted this dot. This is the only LR1 item on which I can do a transition on A. And what will be the look at here? <coughs> Oh, I don't have to do any computation, whatever is the look ahead here, I just carry that. Okay? So I carry that and this becomes now tall. Now if I take closure, okay, closure is going to give me A going to A and A going to dot B. Right? What will be the look ahead here? So how did I get dollar here? Cost of epsilon dollar, very good. Because I am taking closure because of this non-terminal. Therefore, my beta, if you just match this pattern, beta is epsilon here. So I am taking first off epsilon dollar and therefore my look ahead here is going to be dollar. Now you can see a difference between this and this. Here, when I was having this state which said A goes to dot B, my look ahead was A B, and here when I am saying A goes to dot B, my look ahead is dollar. That means when I do a reduction from B to A, in some cases I will do a reduction only on this look ahead and in some cases I will do a reduction only in this look ahead. Because now my parser is able to remember that whether this is the first part of A star B coming out of this or this is the second part of A star B coming out of this A. Okay? So I have separated these two steps, these two states. In earlier case, if you had constructed an SLR parser, then this was not being carried and whenever I had this situation which says A goes to B dot, I said follow of A contains A, B or dollar and I would have reduced that. Clear? Beginning to make sense? Okay. So let's move forward and then we say I want to now compute go to of I0 and I have already done it for A, so I now want to do it for small A. Okay? And let me call this as I3. Okay? And this is going to give me A going to A dot A, which is coming out of this. Okay? And what will we look ahead here? A or B. I don't have to compute anything, I just copy this comes here. Right? Now I take closure because of this. So if I now take a closure which gives me A going to dot A and A going to dot B, what to be the look ahead symbols here? A or B. Right? Because now these closure items are coming because of this A. So therefore I am taking first off epsilon and A or B. So that gives me same thing as A or B, A or B. Okay. So let's move forward from this. Now I can erase this part. And I now say, let me go to on 
or zero you know, B. Okay. So I am doing now. I'll go to on this, and let me call this as a new state called I four, and this gives me a going to B dot. And what is the look ahead here? Here, I am just copying it. I'm not computing anything. Okay. Okay. And I cannot add anything more to this. So this is where. I stop all transitions of I0. Okay. Now I come to I1. I cannot do any transition on I1 here. Then I come to I2. So first thing I notice is I can do a transition on A. Okay. So if I do a transition on A, so let me call it as go to of I2 A, and this gives me as going to A A dot. Okay. And what is the look ahead now? Dot. Because I just need to carry it along. I don't have to compute anything. Let me call this as I5. Okay. And then, so I cannot add anything more to this. Then I do this transition which says go to of I2 on A, right? And this gives me what does it give me? A going to A dot A. Have I already computed it somewhere? Isn't it same as I three? Look ahead is different, so it's not same as I three. Very good. Okay, so you were able to catch that. So this says now I will have a going to a dot a. So I'm coming from here, right? And this is giving me a look ahead of dollar. Let me call this as I six. Okay, and this is not same as this state because look aheads are different. Okay, and now I will take closure here. So this closure is saying a goes to dot a and a going to dot b. And what will be the look ahead symbols here? Dollar again, right? So I'm looking at now first off epsilon dollar. So this gives me a dollar. Very good. Okay. So from i six, if I move now from i two. And I now do a transition on B. Okay, so this is going to give me go to of <coughs> I two on B, and this gives me A going to B dot, and A going to B dot. Although I have I four, okay, but because my look ahead is different, therefore I will call it as a new state, and I call this as state number seven. Okay. And this will not add anything more to it, and so I have exhausted everything in I two. Okay, now I come to I three, and in I three I can do a transition on A. Okay, so if I do now go to of I three on A, what does that give me? A going to A A dot. And what is the look ahead here? Look ahead will be same as this, okay? Which is A or B. Okay. Now this state does not exist anywhere, so let me call this state as I. Okay. And uh, if I now look at this particular state, which says A goes to go to of I three. On A, what does that give me? Gives me A going to A A dot with the look ahead of A B, and that is I C itself, right? I have already computed that. That's not a new state. So this I is taking me back to A I. Okay. If I now do a transition on B in this state, okay. So if I say go to of I three B that gives me A going to B dot with a look ahead of A B, and that is I four. Okay. If I look at I four, I cannot do any transition. If I look at I five, no more transitions possible. If I look at I six, I can do a transition on A. Okay. So now if I compute go to of I six on Upper case A that gives me A going to 
a, a dot and what is the look ahead? Dollar. I just carry it forward. Okay. And this is this does not exist anywhere, so let me call this state as I9. Okay. If I take closure, doesn't that anything go to it? Okay. And now if I so I am here, if I do now a transition on this, if I say now, so let me keep this definition intact. And if I now say go to of I6 on A, okay, that gives me I6 itself. And if I do a transition on B, if I say go to of I6 B, what is that? A going to B dot on dollar. I7, say. So I have exhausted I6. I cannot do any transition on I7, cannot do a transition on 8, cannot do a transition on 9, and I'm done. Okay? So this is how I construct all my set of LR1 items. So I'm no longer computing LR0 items, but I'm constructing LR1 items. Okay? And how do I construct my pass table now? So my pass table rules still remain the same. Okay. So, what are the rules now? That I can have only an accept state. So, accept state is going to come from this. Okay. Basically, whenever you do this reduction, okay, and my look at symbol is dollar, then I will accept. Okay. But if I look at action part and go to part, they are going to remain the same. At least the shift part in action is the same as the earlier one. That if I have a state i i, and this state is containing and LR0 item of this form. Let's say I have alpha dot a b, okay. And then if my new state j it corresponds to a going to alpha a dot beta, I have done a transition on this. So what is it that I do? I'll say if I am in this state, then on a I am going to say shift to j. That's the only thing I do. And what will happen in the go-to part? happen for a non-terminal in the go-to part. Okay? So only new thing that will happen is in reduction now. Okay? So my earlier rule for reduction was, I was saying, in case of reduce action, we said that if I have this particular LR0 item in some state, so suppose my state I contains this, then I was saying in this particular state, if you find a symbol which is in follow of A, then reduce this by this rule. Okay? Now I'll change that, and I'll say, if I'm in this state, okay, and my look ahead symbol is A, then I of A is going to be reduced by A going to alpha. So instead of saying if this symbol is in follow, okay, I'm carrying this information as part of my LR1 item, and therefore I just do this reduction. is conceptually what was the limitation of SLR parser, how we remove that limitation by carrying extra item <coughs> and LR1 item and then controlling the reduction and then how do I compute all my sets of LR1 items. Is this clear? Both now algorithm as well as the concept. Anyone who has a doubt on this? <coughs> if you don't ask questions, remember I ask questions. There can be a quiz immediately. I can give you a grammar and ask you to construct all sets of LR1 items right away. You, if you don't ask the questions. You want to do that? Why did you augment this grammar? Because rule from the starting is only one. So I, I don't even check, right? So it is now become a mechanical set. Okay? Without worrying about, I just take any grammar and add one rule without saying, do I have multiple productions of this, right? So I can put a case there saying that if my start symbol has only one production, then don't, put, don't augment it. I'm making it simpler saying, I'm not even testing if condition, just augment it. Doesn't hurt me. If I don't want to add this, will it be right? Obviously. Okay. So you want to take the same grammar which you had in the previous class and want to construct and canonical LR1 parser for that? Right away, as a quiz? No. Not as a quiz. Not as a quiz. 
assignments you won't do unless I grade it. We, we tested that last time. So I asked you to do a simple assignment, which you did not do. You did not bother to spend 10 minutes. OK, so it's an assignment to be submitted then. OK, and submit it tomorrow. So assignment is to be done. Now take the same grammar, construct canonical LR1 parser for that, okay, and submit it tomorrow morning. You have the grammar already with you. Okay. So let's then move forward. And what I'll do now is I will sort of try to capture this, <coughs> take you through the remaining material quickly. So this is what we started discussing, that if I had a shift action, uh, if I had a reduce action, that was taking me to an error state. And if I did a shift, that was taking me to the correct state. And the limitation we saw was that this state symbol was not able to remember the whole of left context. And therefore, what we did was that there is no sentential form which can start with R equal, where R is in the beginning. Okay? And the reduce action was generating a sentential form of this form and therefore the reduce action is incorrect and in SLR parser when I say that I am doing reduction by the symbol, the symbol may be in follow of A but may not be in follow of L5, what was being on the stack. Okay? And therefore we said this symbol is invalid and problem is that the symbol, state symbol does not capture the left context, does not capture the full stack configuration, just capture the symbol on the top. Okay. And that was the limitation we wanted to remove and because of which we said in canonical LR parser we are going to carry extra information that whenever reduction by this rule happens, we will try to rule out all the wrong reductions and wrong reductions are happening because of a symbol which is in <coughs> follow of A. So now I am carrying extra information which I call as look ahead symbol and I am going to do reduction. So if I am in some state. If I have some LR1 item which is of the form A goes to alpha dot beta, then I will carry extra information like A which I am going to call as LR1 item. And reduction, so this item, LR1 item and the look ahead symbol in LR1 item is only going to affect my reductions and nothing else. So now I am saying that if I have some item like this which says A goes to alpha dot and A, then I call for reduction only if next input is A. Okay? So this is now making sure that next input A although is in follow of A, but I am not looking at all symbols which are in follow of A, but I am looking at something which is in follow of the whole of stack. Okay? So that is what I captured here. Okay? So it is a symbol which is in subset of follow of A okay? and not just the full set which is follow of A. And closure is the <coughs> only definition I changed. So I said if I have this particular LR1 item which says A goes to alpha dot B beta and B going to gamma is a production, then I am going to add another LR1 item to the closure which says B going to dot gamma with the look ahead of B where B is in the first of beta. This is the only change I did. Okay? I did not change anything in go to. So we looked at, oh, so I have slightly different grammar but basically same similar notation where I have a repeat and, okay, and then we constructed all sets of LR1 items for this and this is how we ended up constructing all these LR1 items. Okay. And if I now construct the parse table, all my rules remain the same except this rule where we said that I am going to call for reduction when my look ahead symbol is A. My shift rule and go to rule did not change. Okay. They are same as the SLR parse. Okay. And this is the kind of fast table I get. Okay? So now let us look at something interesting. Okay? And that interesting thing is that if I am in this state, okay, I am doing a rule by redu reduction by rule number 3. And this is my rule number 3, okay? which says that B goes to A. Okay? But if you see here, if I am in this state, then I am doing a reduction by rule number 3, when my look ahead symbol is dollar. Okay? So it is not that every time I will be able to reduce by this rule which says A goes to B. I have separated out these states in SLR parser, you would have noticed that this NP would have contained now, say, even on dollar to a reduction. And reason was simple because dollar also is in follow of A. But here I was able to separate out, okay, so I, here I am using a different symbol C. So here I am able to separate out whether it is the first C or the second C. And the follow of the first C contains only C or D, and the follow of second C contains only the dollar. So I am only doing reductions in this case on CD and in this case on dollar 
and in this case I am doing reductions by rule number 2 and my rule number 2 is this one. So depending upon whether it is the first part or the second part, I am doing reductions on two different states. Yes, so that is what we have just discussed now. So let us look at some of the properties. Okay? So this language which is specified by the grammar I had, okay? so in this case I am using slightly different symbols. So let I found this was slightly confusing because lower case and upper case C can create problem. I should change this example for okay? So this is the string which is specified by the language. And when reading, I am reading this input which is CCD, CCD and so on, okay, or C star D. Parser, parser is going to shift all the C's into stack and then goes into state 4 after reading the D. Okay? And only here you will see that I will be able to do this reduction only if it is followed by C or D and not by dollar. Okay? That, those are two different cases. And if dollar is followed in the first D, then we say that this input is correct, uh, incorrect and parser goes into analysis. In earlier case, it would have just done a reduction. Okay? So on an error, this canonical LR parser, and this is a very interesting property and makes it the more, most powerful method, is that whenever there is a wrong input, okay, it will just refuse to do any more shift and reduce. It will catch it right there. It will not permit you to do any shift or any reduce. It just catches it. And therefore, as far as error reporting and error recovery is concerned, this is the most powerful parsing method we know of. Okay. As far as class of error grammar is concerned, error from grammar is concerned. Okay will not permit any wrong move. Okay? <coughs> Only problem is that canonical LR parser can be very, very large. Okay? Now, let me throw some numbers at you. So, suppose I had a language like C. Okay? How many states parser will have? SLR parser of C, roughly. Some wild estimate, doesn't matter. Typically, you will find that you will have about 7 to 800 states in a C parser, okay? SLR parser. But suppose I go to canonical parser, okay? the number of states may shoot to something like 20,000. Okay? There is an order of magnitude of difference. Okay? So it is not just that I will increase by 5%, 10%, there is an order of magnitude of difference because in the worst case, what can happen is, so I am looking at worst case scenario, that if I look at follow set of each of the symbols, okay? For each of these symbols, I can have a new entry. So if I have n symbols in the follow set, all these n symbols can give rise to one line in canonical error. Right? Now that makes it something which is which is very large. Okay? Also, computation is going to be computation of this particular parser. That means creation of the parse table itself is going to be costly because I have to create, I have to compute so many states. So what do we do? <coughs> because we are not just worried about correctness, we are also worried about efficiency issues. Okay? I do not want to have such large passing table. Because maybe I mean by saying that I will do all these things, okay, I am going for an overkill. Maybe this is all not required. Okay? Can I think of something better? Something which is a compromise between SLR, which is the weakest parser, weakest passing method we found, versus Canonical error, which is the most powerful passing that we have. Can I think of something better? I think you need no states. States, uh, different states you can take in the And what does that give me? So we can reduce the number of states and, uh, and the symbols from which the reductions are done, uh, we can merge those numbers. Will that take me to SLR? So, proposal is that suppose we take all the states and merge them and on the symbols which they reduce. So, let me give a slightly more clear and technical notation to what you are saying. That if I consider all my LR1 items, so let me go back to the set of LR1 items. Okay? Look at some of the LR1 items. Look at 4. Okay? 4 has saying C going to D dot on a look ahead of CD and 7 has C going to D dot on dollar. Now, when I say this is an LR1 item, I say this is my 
kernel of LR1 item, which is basically LR0 item, and it has a look ahead. Similarly, if I look at say 6 and 3, kernel is the same, look ahead is different. If I look at 4 and 7, kernel is the same, look ahead is different. If I look at 8 and 9, kernel is the same and look ahead is different. <coughs> Can I take all these states which have the same kernel and different look ahead and merge them? Is that what you are saying? Now what happens if I merge them? We will get closer to SLR. We will not get SLR. If I get closer to SLR, is that more powerful than SLR? But obviously less powerful than canonical LR, perhaps? You don't know. Okay. So there is one proposal. Okay. Seems like a good doable proposal. Okay. Because all I am trying to do are to reduce the number of states here. Okay. So saying rather than having 10 states, 0 to 9, can I reduce number of states? So how many people want to merge these states? And what are the implications? See, more importantly, what are the implications? So first question, okay. if I merge all these states, how big my parser will be? Is it going to be smaller than canonical LR and larger than SLR? It will be somewhere in between or it will be of something other, some other size. So if I say I have uh, SLR has some number of entries and canonical LR has some number of entries and what is being proposed is do some merge. So let me call it merged parser for the time being. Okay. Number of states, okay, will it be what 10% lower than this, 20% lower than this, 10% higher than this, 20% higher? I mean, what, what are the estimates? Or is it somewhere in the middle average? What is it? Same as the number of states in SLR. Same as the number of states in SLR. Why do you say that? Because in SLR, what we do, we do take these uh, look at some more states. So we have eliminated all those look ahead symbols and we have uh, kind of accumulated them in one. Okay. So everyone agrees with that? That's an excellent observation in fact. Okay. That the number of states I will get after doing this merger because kernels are the same. That means I am now merging all the states with the same kernel in different look aheads. Okay. And therefore number of states I will get are same as SLR. So I think that that's a very powerful method now. Because now I am saying that I can take canonical LR parser and I want to reduce number of states and I reduce it to SLR. <coughs> Issue remains by merging, is it possible that I reach SLR parse table? Because if I say size is SLR, power is also SLR, then what I have gained? Nothing gained. The power is of CLR. Power is of? CSP. What is CLR? Canonical LR. Power will not reduce, okay? So will power be the same as canonical LR? So what we'll do is we'll break here today and tomorrow we'll close this discussion. Okay? And we'll close parsing and we'll want to move to type checking. Only a few things are left, okay? And we'll see what are the implications of doing this merger, whether we get something which is in between or I will get back to SLR and say I did not gain anything and so on. Okay? So let us break here today and tomorrow we continue our discussion.